in our neighborhood, we had a lot of folks that I met along the work, along the way. And I learned to really enjoy them. We had some of them that was good, and some of them were sweet, and then some of them were not so sweet. But, but when you sum it all up, I always think about this song that I learned years ago. I love those dear hearts and gentle people who lived and loved in my heart. I love those dear hearts and gentle people who live in my because those dear hearts and gentle people will never ever let you down. I went to the to the Maryland Historical Society to get information. They told me, say, Mister, if you want any history, if you're looking for history for the call it or black community, we have none. So what you have to do is go back to your own kind and get it. Because we don't have any. I went down and I checked, they checked. I went to the Enoch Pratt Free Library. There's none down there. No problem. Right? So That's this is true. when I come home, I say, Lord, I'm stunned. He said, no, you're not stunned. You didn't talk to people in your life, so you write down what. So I started writing, writing, writing. Years later, I met uh, Matthew Durrington. The professor. I didn't know that he was going to be nowhere. I went down there for Solo Gibbs Day. Uh -huh. And someone from South Baltimore that was on that committee introduced him to me and me to him. And that's how this came about. How were the neighborhoods the when you were growing up down South Baltimore? How was, the, how was your neighbors? The neighbors were nice. Yes. Beautiful. We were all like one big family. And they, they and the, um, all the, the neighbors looked after us when my mother was working, you know what I mean? And they would, now my youngest sister, when this one here, she was the youngest. And she said, she, my mother made sure she was with someone. And she would go, she'd go down there and sit and stay all day and went over my mouth. She wouldn't talk. But um, we, we enjoyed life. We really did. It was really, really, and my mother was very stern. I mean, she not. She was not overbearing, but she wanted us to grow up like ladies and gentlemen, and we did. It was a neighborhood that was a neighborhood. Your children couldn't do anything wrong without their parents knowing it. And if the right person saw you doing it right, he'd take care of you right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then let your parents know, Ooh, yes. and you, you, they'd take care of you later on. But Fortunately, I was one that had liberal parents. This whole area holds my early childhood. I stayed down South Baltimore from, from the day I was born until uh, 19, 1970. So I stayed down here. So I was down here when they were tearing down and I was in the midst of tearing down. It was sad because People have been living here in one house for 50 and 60 years and never owned that. Never owned it. Uh, some of them did, some of them didn't. I mean, they raised families, they raised oodles and noodles of children in one household. South Baltimore in those days took in Hold Your Hat, Cedar Hill. It took in Curtis Bay, it took in Fairfield, it took in Brooklyn. It took in, to a lesser, a much lesser degree, even as far out as Elkridge, because I had children in my class in middle school from Elkridge, Maryland, and from 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 the from what is now Glen Burnie, but back in them days it was Cedar Hill, yeah, Cedar Hill and Pumphrey Station. A few, a very few, came up even from Stony Creek. You know, that's on down past Fort Howard. Okay. Just a few. And along both sides of the bridge. Up. Now, when you got up to, say, Pratt Street, going up Fremont Avenue, because that was our main drive. Yes. When you got up to Pratt Street, then you were in West Baltimore. The one thing I can say about those days, we didn't go look at any kind of way. We, 
But we didn't went out to do anything. We, we were dressed. <laughs> we didn't go out to any kind of you, you couldn't be in Ella Brown's house to any kind of way. I know that. We wore hats when we were little girls. We wore bow ribbons first when we were little. And then when we grew up, those wore hats. Everybody had a hat, straw hat. <laughs> so you know, my mother had to buy a lot of hats, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> and then the younger ones, as you grow up, you get the older sisters a hat. The older, that's how we do too. The, old, the good clothes, they save for the, for the younger ones. That's how we did it. Now, good clothes. Next now, my mother, they wore good clothes for about a year, maybe some of them just wore them a year because they all grew them. Then the next year, I, we wore them. But they were still new, like, you know. Yeah. How did people dress when they went to church back then? They dressed, they dressed formally. You wouldn't dare, woman wouldn't dare go in the house uncovered. Under, aren't we, you just don't know that. You wouldn't dare go in the house uncovered. And pants. Oh, my God. They didn't God. wear pants, period. <laughs> no, and men, uh, when they went, they, when they went up, up into the, to the sanctuary, they had they were dressed. They had ties, shirt, ties and coat. They didn't they didn't go formal, informal rather. It was strictly formal, absolutely. And it, in the case of a funeral, no man would go in there, no family member, <coughs> without a hat on. Had to be covered. And that's the way it was. Now, and it, you know, in the, in the downstairs where the Sunday school and all was, well, yeah, on some occasion you'd go in there a little informal, but not, not any work clothes, no, no work clothes, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Nothing like that, because church was a, was a, was a sanctuary. You, you dress appropriately. Did, did you see how my church? Did you see my little church? I showed him uh, uh, John Wesley. Yeah, John Wesley. Of course, we all loved our church. We did, we all, we just looked forward to Sundays and uh, they, that was different days to go to church and then we had the tables on the outside selling stuff and it was just nice. In the summertime we went to summer school in the morning and in the, in the wintertime we went to school in the evening and on uh, at six o'clock we would go to, our, we used to call it the league, now the Baptists used to call it BYPU. And different people come from different churches and entertain us. And it was nice. It was very, very nice. Then we go home. We spent most of the day in church. Because mm -hmm. there wasn't any movies. And, there, and when, even when the movies opened, we weren't allowed to go to the movies on Sunday. And everything was closed on Sunday when I was growing up. The stores and everything. And it made it nice. I mean, that meant that we were spent most of our time in church. And we enjoyed it. On Sundays we would walk up to Dirt Hill Park. And you know, we'd have our little picnics up to Dirt Hill Park. Because of course, you know, at that time we couldn't go everywhere. You know that. Yeah. But we had a good time. We enjoyed our life. And nobody knew it. I'll tell you the truth, I didn't know I was poor. Because <laughs> we had plenty to eat, plenty to, you know, yeah. plenty of everything. <laughs>